Welcome, ladies and there? gentlemen, to Talk Junkies, where we're coming to you from my basement, not live, as I like to say, because it's completely accurate. But anyways, <clears throat> Johnny's back from Chicago. Oh yeah, I forgot I missed last week. Man, that feels like an eternity it's ago. It's been two weeks for you, man. Yeah, oh, I was here the week before. No, the week before was uh, the snowstorm. Oh shit, you're yeah. right. It's been a while been since Johnny's been in the house. And yeah. I mean, you guys weren't, you did, guys didn't do anything for the snowstorm either. You had your short little like 10 minute video. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude. It, man, that feels like an eternity ago. Chicago was dope. Thanks, bro. <laughs> got you too, bro. <laughs> Jesse's got that inner cat. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the inner cat in him, man. I'm trying to bathe Johnny over there. Thanks. Here, <laughs> you want to lick it? it? Oh, I'm okay on that. That's All right. right. First sponsor is, is that Jesse. mac and cheese, bro? <laughs> Well, uh, so tonight we're going to get into some universal basic income. There is going to be some other things that we'll talk about after that, but that's what we're going to dive into first and the idea behind it. And we live in the Midwest where you have a lot of hardworking people, blue collar people who are trying to work the hardest just to make ends meet. And if they were to get a universal basic, if it ever came down to it, and from what Google CEOs have said, and they've specifically said by the year 2030 that they think that half the workforce will be automate. It'll be automation. So you're going to lose a lot of jobs in doing that. It's just bound to happen, right? With the way that technology is exponential and shit like that and how they're able to just take over jobs and make it cheaper for these, these billionaires to make more money, turn them into trillionaires and shit like that. So the idea behind universal basic income is, hey, we're going to lose these jobs. What are people going to do? You know, I mean... <clears throat> a lot of these hardworking jobs are restaurant industry or manufacturing, shit like that. What are these people going to do to compensate their income when these jobs start to be lost? And I think that an idea that a lot of these rich people have came up with, Mark Zuckerberg, there are politicians who are behind the universal basic income as well, some in, in California, naturally, saying that, you know, let's just write a check to everyone in the United States who's a citizen and give them 1200 bucks a month. God, that sounds so terrible. That sounds just absolutely awful in well, every way, shape, and form, in my opinion. The, the first thing that comes to my mind, I'm pretty sure New Jersey, they passed a law to where you can't pump your own gas to create jobs for people to uh, be able to pump your gas, basically, um, to create jobs. So I don't think it'll ever get to the point to where we allow full automation of shit to all of a sudden take over and then because they don't need an income and human beings still need an income. I think that, yeah, you're right. It will affect it a little bit, but I think that there is always new jobs that will come in and other things where we're like, okay, uh, we're going to figure out a way how this is going to be a job for a person or we're going to create a job for, because that's, that's what a lot of politicians run on is creating jobs for people. Politicians would never come and be like, Hey, I'm going to fully automize an industry and put 50,000 people out of work, you know, this year. And I'm, running for president and you're like no fuck that guy that's that's not but it's already happened we've lost a lot of jobs that's, that's i also true. feel like that's, that's been the natural progression of things but already been a little bit like this is a small scale but a little bit of pushback against that and i think that if it were to go like if people were to start drop, dropping uh dropping jobs left and right you probably would have some laws come into place like the one in new you said it was new jersey with the gas pumping thing jesse yes, you said yes, it was new jersey yes. okay you'd probably have some stuff like that because there's already like a group of people who are super against and petitioning and all the, uh, like when you go into Target or Walmart or whatever, and they've got the self-checkout things, like I try to avoid Walmart as best as possible. The last time I went in there would have been months upon months ago. But you go in there and there's like, it doesn't matter whether it's super packed and busy or slow or whatever. It's literally all the self-checkout things are open with one person helping you scan your items or whatever, show your ID if you got alcohol, whatever. And then, like, three other registers, like, three manned registers. And that's it. Like, every other line is shut down, which is ridiculous when you think about it, when they've got, like, 30 fucking lines or whatever it is. But you've already got groups of people who refuse to use the self-checkout thing and will wait in line longer in the other ones simply for, not because they don't want to use the self-checkout, but because of the job reason. So, I mean, if you already have that little, and that's, like I said, that's small scale, but if you've already got that little bit of pushback, just think what's going to happen when you really start automating everything. <clears throat> like, how, you, you have, how much hopefully you have people who are like, no, we're not going to buy anything from this company because they just let go 75% of their workforce to put in machines. So, we're not going to buy a single thing from them, and then they lose money. I say hopefully that works, but at the same time, here we are 
all shopping on Amazon and stuff for Christmas instead of going to your local store. It's so probably super automated. That Amazon's probably the most automated has it down. You know, they talked about like drones like dropping yeah. off fucking shit. So, but no, hopefully that's what you get. Hopefully you get some pushback from uh, the community. I think the pushback would have already been there because these self checkouts have already came into existence and they've and especially at Walmart it's been multiple years I oh mean, yeah if not five to seven years but I feel like it's, it's really gotten bad in the last like two years yeah but like to go to your point like when I went to Target tonight I went to buy some diapers and shit like that and there's just one person on on, on their checkout line and then they have just one row of you know self-checkout and those were all completely full. And then you have like one person waiting to go in. Which targets a lot smaller too. Right. But, only like but when they did the remodel, they just implemented this. So it's 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 in full force. I don't see it changing. And people are mad about it. Yes, about the fact that pe- people are losing jobs and shit like that. But not mad enough to the point where there has been change. And I don't think that these large corporations will change regardless. You know, unless, like you said, people stop, stop shopping at those stores. That's the only way that you're going to come I mean, back. Come, you got to speak. You got to speak with your money. You have to speak with exactly. your wallet and not the problem is it does one person doesn't help. You got to have everybody exactly. doing it. Exactly. Cuz if just if they lose say, I don't know, 5% of their sales, like 5% of people stop shopping there or whatever, they'll just jack up prices a tiny little bit or whatever and they'll make out just fine, you know? Or they'll cut one more person off and they'll make out just fine. You have to like truly have like 75% of their regular income just drop off cuz everybody stops. When you would think that in this is all fairly new. Like I said, Walmart probably implemented implemented this, and it's they've had it for at least ten years. Because oh remember, yeah, Walmart. No, I remember back in the day at yeah. Walmart. It was small though. They still had. I remember going when I was like sixteen or seventeen. So I was like driving and stuff. Like it wasn't like going with my parents. Like it was just me going. Yeah. You know? But they had you had several lanes open. Like eight was lit up, seven was lit up, twelve was like you had tons of stuff lit up where you could go through. And they'd like wave you over and be like, "Hey, I got nobody over on this line or whatever." Blah blah. Like that never happens anymore. Like no. they legitimately like the most I've seen open is like three. You know, it's even they even have stores now. Like you're talking about self checkout being bad. They have stores now that are open uh, in California, and I, I don't know what tech company is basing this, but there are no employees in the store at all, and you literally just walk in and put your groceries in a cart and then walk out. And then it scans all of it as you leave, and then they charge your account. So there is no checkout. There is no checkout. You literally get your groceries. You put it in your shopping cart. You walk out. It literally scans every item that you have as you're leaving, and and it's connected to your account with that. Like, you have to download the app for whatever store it is, and then it immediately just takes it all out. So it's not even a self-checkout. The problem is, man, they make – and it's – it goes back to Amazon with like I bought a lot of stuff on Amazon. Like everything I got for people on Christmas other than one thing was all on Amazon. So like I'm at fault too, as much as everybody else. Like I bought everything from Amazon instead of going to your local places and supporting the Well, you can't find all the things. No, I mean to a degree the like I mean like I bought music related stuff. I could have went to a music store and got that. And it, yeah, it would have been pricier, which would have sucked for me, but it would have helped that store stay alive, you know. But I didn't do that. I went to Amazon. And the same thing with, like, what you're talking about. And now they've got the thing where you can literally, which this would still use people. So this is kind of a mute point. It would still use people. But, like, hy V, if you want groceries, you can order it all online. And I'm not talking about their delivery because they do that too. But you can order everything you want online, and then you go there and pick it up. And there's, like, no extra charge either. Yeah, I've never just, done that, you, but there's no extra. Like, there's an extra charge if you have it delivered. Right, but for no extra charge whatsoever, you can just give them a list, and they do the shopping for you, and then you go there's and pick no it up. There's no way that pay. there's no extra charge for that. No, no. Well, I, but that's what they're. But, it says. But with at least having that, it does create a job for a human being to go right. seek you're out right. those items. You would. They it's have like, like a Roomba. You're not. You know, Roomba's not Target out ha- your Cheerios. And Target shit has for the you. same thing. They have like a parking center just specifically for those people, and then they drive up to you, and they or they, they'll walk up to you with those items and say, "Here you go," and it's already paid for. And it's convenient as shit for sure. Um. <clears throat> but it, it makes sense for there to be no extra charge, by the way, because then that's how you would get more people to shop there. Right. That's just another convenience thing. But minus all that and just the automation part of it, I'm more or less talking about the universal basic income and how you guys think that that will affect our society. Yeah, we kind of digress yeah, there no, for well, a second. Well, we can for sure. But, I mean, is that a bad idea to for someone to make an extra 1200 every, every single person that's a U.S. citizen, and I don't know what, at what age that that would happen if right when you turn 16 or 15 and you're able to work, and at that point you'd get a smaller check. But... um you get extra money. So 
me being a general manager of a Mexican restaurant, on top of what my salary is right now, I would get an additional twelve hundred dollars a month, let's say, give or take, um, mm-hmm. just just to spend on whatever. Where does that where does that twelve hundred dollars come from? That's the big question. Where does that come from? Because I guarantee you, it's not going to strengthen. Not, it's not going to come from the the upper the elite, the upper class. It's not coming from the one percent. There's no way they're paying that out to everybody else. They would never want it put into place in the first place. So maybe they shrink the military budget. That's not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. They should shrink the military budget. But that's not going to yeah. happen. So unless they shrink it's something gonna come else. From, it's going to come from the, for that reason, though. Not for that reason. I think it's going to come from the middle class. I think, well, this, this defeats the whole purpose of capitalism to begin with. Because if you that think too. about what capitalism is, it's the American dream is you're able to obtain whatever you want as long as you work hard enough for it and you pursue it. There is no cap, oh... I have this dream and I work 60 hours a week on this fucking dream in a communist country and I can't get anywhere because I have to give all this to the government and then the government decides what to do with this money. As to where in capitalism, I can work so hard on this dream and I make this profit and then I can spend this profit on expanding my dream and getting closer to whatever my goal is. You can't just, you can't just give people money for just being alive kind of thing do you remember you can, you can give money to people who have don't get me wrong disability people need people everybody should have clean drinking water and food shelter is very important all this but you can't just give people able working people money and then all of a sudden they can live off that and next thing you know that almost makes them a prisoner of the system that they're in anyway to where why would you ever want to progress if i'm getting this and then i i think that's almost an imprisonment thing well, what about, <clears throat> so whenever George Bush, I think it was his second term, and he had a stimulus package, and everyone got extra money back on their taxes. Oh, and that's it, what that was. Yeah. I remember that. I remember being a busser getting like $1,500 back one year. That yeah. had to have been that. Right. I was like, whoo. It was like two or three years like a in car. a row when you did your income tax, you got a stimulus. Just, I, I remember that time, and I remember what you're talking about. I do not remember getting extra money, though. Yeah, everyone I, got extra I, money. I, I believe you. I just, yeah. I just don't remember it. No, I remember I, my ping bring pretty much the same ever since I've... I think that if you were to look at it in any way, shape, or form, the fact that you know thirty percent of our wages are garnished from the government, anyways, if there were no added taxes, and like it you said, be less than thirty percent. No, it's thirty percent, for sure. It's 30%. it depends on it depends. Yeah, on your I guess income. I guess yeah. your income. But <clears throat> I, I think I'm under the thirty percentile. But, but in essence, Johnny, like you said, if where's this money going to come from, right? And is it going to raise taxes? And that we would have to look deeper into what universal basic income really entails. And we could probably look that up and just gather where that money would come from. But if if the government's going to write us a check, like they're already taking money from us anyways. Each and every single check, 30% of what we make over a year. And just however much we each make, you know, I mean, why not? I just feel like there's no way they do it. I feel like there's no way they do it without taking more money, though. Exactly. Wouldn't it it be better just make, make education cheaper? I don't know, make rent cheaper, maybe raise minimum wage a little bit. To where people on minimum wage can also, if they work a 40-hour week, can afford a spot and not fucking be worried about keeping their lights on and shit. Like, just basic shit like that. Like, just don't give, you know. I told I, you I guys. Feel like everything, everything would end up acclimating to where that $1,200 that you got a month would end up being nothing. Because everything else fucking increases to be able to pay for but that. But just think about this. Every single homeless person that's homeless right now would you just get a $1,200 check. And what they, what they do with that, that's neither here nor there. We don't know what they're going to do with that. If they buy drugs or if they actually get a house and then they start being productive citizens in society again. We don't know that. But ones if they do. You know what I'm saying? At that point, but I don't know. Because you I don't them, know. No, I, I, I see that argument. I, I can understand uh, that argument, too, to where you're giving them that boost and like, hey, here's some here's some income and you can actually start. You, you can go out and buy yourself some clothes. You can go out and fucking job hunt now. I'm gonna, And you feel more self-reliant, even though that's I don't know. I don't I'm going to do the whole devil's advocate thing here again that I feel like I haven't done in a while. And I don't believe in this, but I'm just playing the other side here. Um, recently, there was a thing where they have these decommissioned cruise ships in California parked along the line or whatever, and they're turning this into um, housing for the homeless. But a problem that they have run into is people who aren't homeless but are super low wealth, super like low, don't make very much money, definitely below the poverty line, so on and so forth, give up what they're doing so that they can now live and be homeless in this cruise ship because it's better than the way they live right now working. So when you give someone an out for free, like this, the stimulus thing or the whatever, this money that like, you find people who are paying taxes to 
to make this money available for other people. Like, well, why work and pay taxes then when I can just get this money for free? If I'm already, I'm talking about the lowest of the low. I'm talking about the people who are for already sure. in right. a super bad spot. Exactly. But I mean, like you said, I think that those places will still exist for, just for the simple fact that, like you said, if this were to go in and, and actually be a thing, everything else is going to jack up in prices. So we're literally, people are going to be getting money and still, even if they get 1200 bucks a month, all their money would go to just live somewhere at that point. You know, they wouldn't have any money for anything else. I'm, man, after talking about all this and the, and the stuff we've talked about in the past, I'm coming more and more to realize that like, I'm still super for capitalism. I really am. And I've even leaned more that way after watching and listening to a bunch of like Dave Ramsey stuff where I like, and, and messing with stocks myself and all this stuff. I'm like, man, you can make it like you can, you're not trapped. You got to put, you, you put some effort in and you can do it. That's the whole point. Just but put some fucking effort in. But it. You at can the work same time, at the, the same time, at the same time, fuck you. If you're making 93 billion goddamn dollars a year, you don't need that. Give some of that back. And Seriously, it sh- and it shouldn't be up to them to decide. They need to be taxed higher. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing they, wrong with earning your way. Like I truly do believe in capitalism, but there has to be a limit too. When you get to these ungodly sums of money that you can never spend in your lifetime, or your kids' lifetime, or your kids' kids' lifetimes, and you've set up not one or two generations, but multiple, multiple generations of people, like, like give some of that back to the community. Give that back to your employees. Do something to boost the economy and have more people buy stuff i mean even like what was it henry ford did that and he's not a great person he did it so that people would buy more everybody thinks he's some kind of hero but he did it so that his employees would buy their cars and he would make more money off of it but it still at least gave them some more money yeah i'm all for a a cap for sure when it comes to how much money you can actually you know have but that's not capitalism though I, i i think it's still capitalism if there's like Johnny and Johnny's talked about it a lot. I think it's still capitalism if there if you if you make that mark, let's say a billion dollars. After a billion dollars, there's no, nothing more that you can do. Like that's still capitalism. That doesn't turn anyone off in the fact that hey, I still have the American dream and I still need to strive to make as much money as possible. But once you hit a billion dollars, like Johnny said, dude, like your your future generations are still set up at that point. No, there's just there's there's got to be some. Honestly, it's not even about like it being about the money. Like, there's just got to be some humanity there, to a degree. Like, you got to be able to like, if you if you like if I mean I donate a couple of hundred bucks to s- certain things every year. I've Jesse's talked about You're donating to a huge gray area right now as far as what is too much that an individual is deserved. Like, does Will Smith deserve his fucking? I'm not like thirty million dollars. I'm not fucking talking home. about. I'm not talking about deserving. I'm talking about giving back though. There's. Yeah, no, if you work really hard, like, you deserve every bit of that money. You deserve every bit of the $93 billion you made. Jeff Bezos deserves every bit of the money he's made. He should also, on a human level, be willing to give a lot of that back, knowing that he doesn't need it all. He deserves it, and he earned it, but be a decent human being and give it back. And I'm, maybe I'm talking out of Dude, my ass here. Maybe he does give a shit ton of money Dude, it's back. a monarchy. That's like a monarchy thing that you're... That's literally monarchy with extra steps. <laughs> You know what I'm saying right now is what you're saying. These massive individuals that have so much and there's so many people with so little, why aren't they Why aren't they giving it right? Which they probably do give. But And also, this is begged into question. Now it's up to them where their money goes to help in certain things. Like they could be super into this one particular cancer research that helps like less than 1% when they could have given their money here to feed people who actually would help this massive fucking population over here or fucking Flint, Michigan still needs fucking clean water and shit. How do you know that the money is being put in the right spot that's to the actual betterment of humanity and that's actually done through our government and through our voting process? Because we put position, uh, individuals in positions of power to be like, hey, this is where our tax money now needs to be divvied out. The big difference is like liberals to Republicans. You have liberals that believe in a big government. They fund uh, all these programs for poor people and everything and then you have Republicans that are more about small government. They want to fund military, all this. Uh, it's, it's always been the issue, but we that's why you vote on shit. But we don't get to vote on CEOs and companies. CEOs and major wealth holders in this nation, we don't get to vote on. So now it's up to them that's deciding where all of this excess of wealth goes to and how it progresses our future, more so than what our government does. That is so much of a monarchical 
aspect. It's fucking scary. Even though I said it's a corporate oligarchy that we're living in anyway, it's really not capitalism. But I mean, that's it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't just be up to one person with who really feels, and this could feel really good in his heart to fucking donate to this, but it's really not optimal for the rest of society because he's only living through his eyes. Mm-hmm. It needs to be the voice of the people that say, hey, this is actually where this money needs to be going. Well, that's where Paul's cap comes in that he was talking about earlier. After a billion, everything else goes back to something Every, different. It's rough. And not you find a, this gray area. So you find, you find yourself in this weird gray area after, in, in maintaining. No, no, no. After a billion, there, there goes your universal basic income. There you go. Right there. Every, yeah, everything after a billion just goes back to everybody? Yeah. Divvied out, man. I don't know how many billionaires that we have in the United States. It's it's not over a hundred. I know that. Oh, it's, it's got to be over a yeah, hundred. It's got to be. It's not over a hundred. Dude, we we have the most. We have China. I'm just curious. I'm exponential just curious. growth for sure. Yeah, I, I watched. No, I watched something on this. China. We have the most. We have the highest exponential growth rate of billionaires we've ever seen. There are more new billionaires every year. China than has we the have most. Ever fucking China seen. has the most. Uh, China has the Japan? most. Up. You think it's Japan? It China. Might be China. It might China, be China does. You're probably Pro- right on that. No, but they have this massive exponential growth with billionaires, and you also have the biggest difference between CEOs Six, and the lowest paid employees. 607 billionaires that reside in the U.S. Okay. So it's not 1,000. So anything over a billion and you have 600 people, that's that's $600 billion. Let's say if they're yeah, all over then, a, you know, 2 billion, if they all each yeah, have 2 where, billion, where does their ego get checked? The, you know, that, that'd be their argument. Well, where, what's our motivation to do anything more after a billion? You have a billion dollars. <laughs> I know, You're right? still a billionaire. See, but we don't, we're not living life through their eyes. That would, that would seem and like a billion's, a billion's so dude, much that, too. That'd, like, be, that'd be like the government coming in and literally taking milk out of your fridge. No, that's and then no, taking, not at all. And then how, taking how? like a half gallon of gas no, away from you. Not at all. You man. still have your house. You can still go buy it. You can go buy another gallon of milk, right? Dude, you're not going to stop doing they're gonna be like, doing. why are you coming in, taking my gallon of milk and like like a half gallon of fucking tank out of my guy oh, out of my goddamn gas tank? Okay, so even, even yeah. though you'd be fine without no, it, no, right? That, so Jesse, like, Jesse, that's you, false, Jesse, man. they already it's do that right false. now. It's called taxes. Yeah, they don't they don't tax do you, them like how they're. How, it, it, no, I'm saying they already do that to you though. Right, they do it to no, you. They, they, why not do it to them? Yes, exactly. They do it to everyone. But, but who, what you're saying is what you're saying is though it's completely gone after a billion. It's not even a percentage tax. Yeah, everything it's after just, a billion. Okay, just, for, just for shit, just for conversation. That's, but that's hold on, wait. hold on. They're not so they're avoiding taxes because they know how to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. there's their tax right there. Bada bing, bada boom, dude. Like they're not getting taxed. Jeff Bezos not getting taxed. His corporation's not getting taxed. So after a billion dollars, boom, money goes back. It's divvied up between everyone in the United States, or it pays off national debt. Whatever, whatever, whatever would benefit the country and make the country move to a more prosperous place. Not talking utopia or anything like that. Maybe it goes to space travel. Maybe it goes to education, fixing our our education system, and it pays teachers. I feel like more it should money. definitely go to education yeah. before space travel. So boom, there we go. Not everyone gets money. It goes to paying teachers higher wages. However, because you need the engineers to be able to create the spaceship to go out into space, right? Exactly. Is that your mentality with that? Like education is more important than space. No, travel? education is more important in educate general people, for all of you get better people. space travel in the end because you have well educated yeah, educate engineers. the people. You get right. better everything in the end. Yeah, I mean. I'm just a huge advocate for no, education. No, me too. I'm Same. all so that's I was just Dude, I and the price to get the, to the bones. Of I saw one. something the other day and I told you guys about <laughs> this. It wasn't during the podcast. I just mentioned it because one of my old uh, fraternity brother of mine that I never knew, he was in the fraternity way before I was. I'm talking old school. Posted something that he found and it was like his college tuition thing. And in the 80s, like 86 or 87 or whatever it was, it was like $87 for a semester for tuition. And then housing was like a thousand dollars and something. So it was like a thousand dollars for room and board, and then eighty-seven dollars for tuition. When I went, it was like ten thousand dollars for a year for tuition, and that was that's massive. Thirty inflation. years later, massive. From eighty-seven dollars to ten thousand dollars for tuition, and how much has minimum wage changed since then? Four bucks. Yeah. Which is a joke because if you look over the past ten years, it really hasn't changed. But it it is technically changing now. Which whether you go Republican or Democrat, nothing's changed in that amount of time. But like, even that's if, absolutely man, ridiculous. even if it's it's, it's been less than one thing, all of us like middle level people can get on board with, right? Is that you've seen this? It costs more for essential fucking things, uh, medical, education, uh, and housing, are the fucking big three. That's just absolutely skyrocket, and. You see entertainment become cheaper, fucking shit that just makes you not want to fucking do shit becomes cheaper, and then minimum wage fucking stays the same. So question, I'll s- question real fast. So if we were to put this cap and a billion dollars is all you can make, and Jesse, would it deter 
you from being a billionaire at that point? No, absolutely not. So then why not do it? Why not do it? Each and every single year, you're going to make a billion dollars. The problem is you're fucking with people who have multiple billions of dollars right now. And you go, whoa, what, what happens to my but money the, now? You can't even spend that much. That's the thing. Is, and this is something I just, or not, I didn't just find. I saw this the other day, but it's a, it does a really good job of like, people don't realize how much a billion is. We hear the word a billion and we don't realize how much it is. We're like, oh, it's a lot. But to compare, like a million would be a lot for you, right? Like a million you can spend though in a lifetime between a house and a car and a whole bunch of other stuff and education for your kids. If I had a million dollars right now, I'd never have to work another day in my life. Okay, so to compare it though, you just said a million dollars would be enough for you to never have to work a day in your life, right? Absolutely. Okay, so just to show the magnitude, the difference between... I know, I know the stock market and how the stock... Don't get me wrong, it's not like I could just use that hundred million. You would have I to still, invest. You still have you, to have some knowledge and still you. invest it. You could live off that hundred million. But you could make a million work. You could figure out how to Absolutely. make it work, right? Me okay. personally. So not to just show you in a money market. So I think then that all of them, all the billionaires, could make one billion instead of ninety three billion or whatever. One billion work just fine. So like if just um, a million seconds to compare the two, a million seconds is the equivalent of twelve days. A billion seconds is thirty one years. Jesus. It's a big fucking difference. 12 days compared to 31 years. Now put that on like a money scale. If you can live off a million, think what a million gets you 12 days. A billion buys you 31 years. 999999000 dollars, right? What? That's 999999000 dollars. Well, if, yeah, if plus you, another 999 yeah. dollars. Plus another mil, but yeah. Right. That's in like whatever. No, the, you describing it in a time fashion makes that completely relevant to people because we're, we're linear, hey. time-based beings. Hey. That makes... If I told you that with a million dollars you can live for 12 days, or for a billion you can live for 31 full-on years, now take the fact that with a million dollars you can live for a lifetime. A lifetime. What would 31 billion so, do for you? So you that, see you're making, you're making, after two years, you're making two billion dollars. That's, what, 62 years? All right. Like if you make a, a billion one year and the next year you make another billion, that's yeah, two. Yeah, but billion. that's even. I mean, we're we're doing a weird comparison for sure, now for with sure. the time thing. That's just to but show you the difference. No, the I think the biggest looking back on from back when I was able to like start understanding shit, probably back in like the early two thousands, back when I was really starting able to grasp grasp things. You can tell that the separation of these individuals and and the money the money distribution has just gotten fucking awful. And nobody's getting upset about this because the media doesn't, doesn't ever fucking talk about this. When does Fox News ever bring up, you know, they bring up war, they bring up new politicians and everything, healthcare, all this, but the, probably the no biggest... No one brings up IRS, taxes, or, no, or the Federal Reserve. Probably no the no biggest one. fundamental problem isn't a moral fucking issue. You look at a financial issue and the distribution of wealth between the wealthiest fucking people and the fucking poorest people. And how this is can be very easily fucking well not easily fucking fixed, but it can be fixed. You just gotta change it a little bit. Even just changing it a little bit. Like actually start taxing so you're on some shit. And I understand like you heard some shit. Like we brought up um uh, uh the EpiPen. Like how the EpiPen and mm -hmm. you were like, well, they needed more money to research other things, which is for the actual betterment of humanity. I I think me and Paul disagreed with that uh, in the end, that that's way too fucking much. I mean, you talk about, like, a, I think it was, like, over a 200% oh, increase. Okay, you're not talking about the other day. You're talking about a while back this in was the a, podcast. This yeah. was a long, this yeah, yeah, was a yeah, while yeah. ago on a podcast. We were talking about EpiPens and the increase of EpiPens. Um, it's too much. 200% over a five-year fucking span for a life-saving fucking drug. Even if it is going to some shit. Well, people need to stay alive. Like, that's the whole point of medicine, right? Keep people alive. You can't financially rut them. And then put them in depression. Now they need fucking depression medication because they're so depressed because they have to fucking pay this ridiculous amount for their EpiPens just in case they have an allergic reaction to fucking keep them alive. And next thing you know, they have to pay for their fucking anti... It's, it's, it's a bad spiral. It, things are so unbalanced. It is ridiculous. And the fact that you see these... And, and for me, it's always... I've, I've seen this graph multiple fucking times. You see this comparison to minimum wage, fucking housing... Education, healthcare, all skyrocket. Minimum wage literally has stayed the same, like almost fucking flatlined. And then you see all these entertainment fucking things that just get cheaper. It's such a bullshit thing. So the shit you don't need becomes cheaper and more accessible. And the things you do need all of a sudden fucking go way up. What kind of society are you living in? Where all of a sudden entertainment is more accessible than fucking having good medicine or good education. It's a devil. Entertainment, society. entertainment, entertainment makes people money. That is an yeah. awful. That is an awful. Dude, Netflix is fucking pennies. 
Net, dude, cable used to cost. People were like, "Man, I can't afford Hundreds. cable." It's I know, but I'm saying you get fucking Netflix for eight eight dollars, and you could waste your goddamn life away. You'd never be able to watch any everything on fucking Netflix. You can. It's not even, like you even have to wait for it to come on. You just press a button, and there it is. Goddamn, education's way too expensive. Well, I'm gonna avoid college now because I can't get a hundred thousand dollars in debt and all this, and take this amount of time off work and take time away from my family and all this. I'll spend one hundred twenty like, bucks a year and just watch Netflix, and I'm good. Right. Right. It's it's such a backwards thing. It is not. Honestly, it's what they you, want. You want you want those things to be almost fucking reversed because that creates a better society in the end for fucking people. Yeah, because you have a more progressive society, you have a more well educated society, you have a healthier society. So I think that what, is not the priority. So with, what's has it, it ever been the priority with America? I don't know. I'm only 28 I, years old. So make make like, make Netflix make Netflix ten thousand dollars a year to watch Netflix, but make. Uh, what college? You can go to college. You can go to college, college for, for fucking 100 bucks, eight bucks, eight bucks, yeah. bucks a month, eight, eight bucks, bucks a month. Go to Sign college. Me Sign and, me up, dude. I'm down. And you, you can go to you can go down. to MU. You can go to MU for eight bucks a month. Yeah. And you become this well educated. You fucking get a degree. I think. Next I th- thing you know, you're this well empowered, uh, intellectual fucking individual that can fucking come in. And all of a sudden, super competitive market. Every everything new ideas fucking come up. Inventions fucking get and made. The, but the thing it's is, like, th- th- this society. isn't something new. This is something that's happened to every society throughout <laughs> civilizations. And when you get large groups of societies, it's like we're so consumed with entertainment. We're we're so much. Human beings love easiness. We love the easiness aspect of life. Which there is a, there is a time and place for that too. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, v- very true. Life, but like, life shouldn't what, just be hard work. What what happens when you force a society or a large civilization to actually? Go for something that's to the betterment of that society, as opposed to just giving them cheap entertainment and just everyone's wasting their. No, that's away. that's the problem. Is that peop, even the people who want to better themselves and do better for society and so on and so forth can't afford it. You have people who can't afford it. They're literally they don't want to just sit at home and watch Netflix. Like they don't want to be lazy. They don't want to be a piece of shit and just do that. But they're literally unable to even afford bettering themselves. That's a problem. It's a huge problem. And yeah, you can say everybody can work and you can get there. You can do hard work and so on and so forth and whatnot. But I don't know. There's a limit there. There's I a- think we all might like capitalism and the idea of it, but there's something wrong with it, man. There's something truly wrong with the fundamentals of I don't think the problem is capitalism. I think the problem is people. We've, we've said this before. Any Everything needs to be changed over time to adapt. Capitalism works, and, and I still believe it works. I still think that capitalism is the best economic system that you can have in a government. Uh, but the problem is, what worked so well back then, you have people that have been able to abuse the system, and like anything else, have corrupted it, and now have taken it to this level of, um, it's just a level, it's been corrupted. It's Something been corrupted, and nothing, nothing new has come in to um, equalize this whole thing with capitalism. And any idea that's been presented isn't anything that would actually change anything. I mean, to my knowledge. The problem is too many too many rich people are not held accountable. Politicians aren't held accountable anymore. Uh, there's they get away with everything now. Is the biggest issue. Nobody and and I've said this before. Whenever I talk about hierarchies, because this is a hierarchy issue, is they haven't fucked with us just enough to where we go and we're like, okay, well, we as the people of the United States who are the foundation and the the focal point of this government which is what this whole thing was based off of to fucking begin with uh, we're we're taking you out of power now we just we haven't come to that point point. and i think that if enough shift happens it will and, and you see people but they're, they're they really know how to fucking up, work it man they've they're, been, hold on, they've they're been really so good at making not enough shit happen they're good at that we talked about this the, the, yeah, pain on, on, versus, the pain versus pleasure thing and For keeping sure. the right amount and we like, talked about that a lot I think which is that, why they've they've allowed fucking entertainment to lot, be so cheap and a lot of that whole makes true. you docile man makes and, you docile and, and, and I think that that's probably where China got it wrong is because they censor people so hardcore and they do so much shit to oppress the people that that's what budge. And that's why you have these million people protest. And it's not just China, man. There's It's multiple countries in the world. But America has it right, man. Like, make them feel like they're free. Make them feel like they're free. <laughs> I mean, they've figured it out. they figured yeah. out how to manipulate us into a point of... It, massive amounts of population. You're talking 325 million people that they're able to control and manipulate to where they're still making billions and billions of dollars and able to control everything that we do when we think that we're still free. Is that so shitty that you're just like, man, if China just took examples of what the United States is doing and what's able to keep... Everybody would be docile there too, right? It'd be right? game over, man. Game they're over. They're not doing it right. They're not. Not at all. They're, they're still... Because they're still a communist nation, so they have those communist fundamental ideas of how they control people. But sadly, 
communism really hasn't fucking worked over the long period of time. Because eventually you have how, you have people that fucking stand up against that shit and be like, no, you can't fucking take everything away. How I mean, have the top... I have, I have a fucking voice here. But, I mean, and, and maybe that China is doing something similar, but their population is so massive. I think it's like 2 billion people. So their population's... It's like four or five times more than ours. Mm. So when you have a, a homeless population the size of... I don't know, you know, maybe the size of California, 10 million people or something I don't know like the numbers. that. When you have like 10 million, 10 million people that are homeless, I'm just throwing a number out there. Then, of course, something's going to change or budge. You know, something's going to give at that point. So maybe maybe they do some similar shit that we do. They just have a massive population and they're, they've hit their breaking point. Because the conditions that those people live in is absolutely insane. It's disgusting. It's inhumane. I mean, you're oh, talking some of those apartments that those people work like sixty size. hours. Coffin Dude, they size. work like sixty hours a week. They don't. They don't have. They can barely afford fucking food, and they live yeah. in. You're right. It's like the size of my goddamn closet. Yes, that they live to in. where they can just lay down and sleep. That's it. People rent shit out like that in China. Yeah, and they can barely fucking afford that, and they're working their fucking ass off. Yeah, for yeah, and I'm sure that um, the distribution of wealth is also really bad in China. I would assume it's probably even worse than than in America. It would well, have to be. And, it would have to be. And I and I don't know population control or anything like that you've had multiple billionaires come out and talk i mean bill gates one saying that we need to decrease the amount of people that live on this earth and i don't know if it's necessarily resource based or if it's just economic based but are there too many people no, there, there should be i'm not talking about killing off people but i think that people need to quit having so many kids because our you know you need better contraception i think i don't know Th- this is getting off in a weird opinion it's going to piss a lot of people off because they're like there's a lot of you know, even religions out there and like sex of people like so the Catholics are like about having massive amounts of kids and you can, you know, oh, don't ever tell me I can't have a massive amount of kids. I, I'm, I'm sorry, like on, like on a level, you can only spend so much time and attention on developing uh, so a many kids. Being. If you have fucking 15 goddamn kids, I'm sorry, two of those, one of them is fucking killing someone. Uh, another one's going to fucking prison. Another one's going to be a fucking bum. And then, yeah, you're going to have some successful ones in there, too. But you can only roll the dice so many goddamn times with kids before you realize, I can't spend enough attention with this one. All of a sudden, this one has this emotional attachment that all this shit, you, man, you run the risk. I'll just give up my on parents, that one because I got 13 other good ones, right? Bro, bro, right. my parents did the same shit. I was one of fucking six. I was a fuck up when I was a kid. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that this is because of the amount of fucking kids that, that they have, but there's got to be some fucking... I don't know. Somebody might be shitting on me right now, fucking listening to this. But I don't think people should fucking have like nine goddamn kids, fucking twelve fucking kids and shit. That's way too m- fucking many. How much do you need your fucking your DNA to fucking be spread across, fucking Mongolian ass dictator? Like everybody's related to fucking what's Kangas gone right? Because all he did was fuck motherfuckers and just have shits on a fucking kids. You don't need your DNA spread around that much. I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent. To you. You don't think that population would be an issue? Like, okay, okay. At, so let me let point? me say this. Let me okay. So let me like, let me, let me rephrase on, that whole on, thing. On, on, if if my, you were if you're willing to have kids, if you're willing to have kids, you want nine kids. Fucking have nine kids. For sure. I'm talking about preventing the people that didn't ever fucking want kids that fucking got pregnant and had to have the fucking kid. I'm talking about why don't we limit those numbers a little bit because those end up being the motherfuckers that go to prison. No, I'm I'm just those t- are criminal fucking individuals. Sure. I'm we just need, we need contraception. I think and, like my my question was like is. Is China and the United States so so different in the in the fact that, like I said, maybe the United States has it right when it comes to controlling people in the masses? Maybe China had it right for so long, but eventually there's just too many people that eventually you're going to provoke a certain group of people to where you have the protests that you have now. I don't think China had it right though in the first place. I think there was way too much censorship and so on and so forth, and they didn't have it. It's funny saying the word that they didn't have it right, like saying that America does have it right because America literally we've talked about the fact that they're doing the whole bread and wine thing. They're giving us the arena. They're giving us the entertainment to keep us docile. I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Yeah, that's very, 100% what it is. Yeah. That's honestly, that's what all that is. Netflix and everything you do for convenience and Hulu and the ability to... Heck, sporting. We all love the fucking Chiefs. Yeah. And that's the same goddamn thing as the fucking Coliseum back in the day, which was literally made to keep people docile and to keep from having an uprising. Like the way they, why the way they talked created. about they talked about gladiators and didn't talk about politics because they were like the last thing we want is people talking about what we're doing. No, you want people. You want people. You want people getting drunk and talking about gladiators, or in our sense, sports. We we do it. We're all guilty Which of it. Also, there's nothing wrong with it too, but it's got to be in the fucking right amount. 
anyway. And, and there's nothing wrong with entertainment, but I think it's gotten to a point where it's affected us. A, a, it's affected us as a nation in and how we are building this nation. Obviously, we all know that, man, and we've had many podcasts about it, and it's frustrating. And I think when it boils down to it, yeah, universal basic income wouldn't change a damn thing. I mean, it truly wouldn't. No. I mean, it, it m- it's not fixing the fucking fundamental problem that we fucking have. You're you're creating you're you're not solving a goddamn problem. You're putting a band aid over a bleeding fucking wound that needs fucking stitches and antibiotics and fucking professional doctors and what you talk about with this universal whatever. Just oh, let's just fucking give people money, dude. It's a band aid. It's a goddamn band aid over a gash that does not fucking fix it. The problem is we're not scrutinizing our fucking government enough. We're not implementing fucking laws that are actually making people accountable for what they're doing on high levels. Like, look at what back happened in 2008. Wasn't everybody so pissed that all these CEOs of fucking banks got bailed out? What changed? And then, dude, nothing fucking changed. All they did was go out and buy more shit. And we're <laughs> like, we paid for you to get out of this because you represent the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy literally flows through you. So we had to bail you out to save you. And you literally... Just took us as a fucking joke. They still gave themselves bonuses. Yeah, Yeah. I know. They literally gave themselves bonuses that year. The CEOs of Bank of America and fucking all these... I can't even fucking name a goddamn another one. Uh, You're talking about the big ones like Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. Fucking all these motherfuckers. Lehman Brothers. They were like, look at what we got away with. Like, they robbed us. Robbed us. Motherfuckers were out on the street. Hardworking people were out on the street. And they just got paid more. How the fuck does yeah, that they work? Yeah, they still got bonuses. And they everybody still got bonuses was pissed. That year. Dude, everybody was Millions pissed. Millions of dollars. I think, I think. Dude, break. but they're still, dude, they're still, you know one person fucking spent like six months in jail over that entire fucking uh, It was longer than six months, but yeah. Dude, one, and he was low level. He wasn't even CEO. They got I him think, on some weird fucking shit. I think what, it, what is true Because they needed a fucking scapegoat, basically. They needed to it, hang somebody, right, for the public to be like, oh, the government's doing, look, they're doing oh, yeah. something. One person. I Let's still give them all bonuses, shit, though. We're, we're extremely deep, man. We're extremely deep because so many people, and I'm not, I'm not trying to call them woke or shit like that. So many people are, they don't know. I hate you using that word. Yeah. I just no, gotta say that. Right I hate now. you yeah. saying every, word. I hate you saying word. Every time deep. you use the word woke, man, that that just I don't know why that makes. But me unfortunately, mad. I don't know why it makes you mad because there's so many people when you talk about that instance. It's, I, I where, relate where that people, to a certain group of people that I think don't have shit okay. exactly. So how people, people who are those people aren't woke. So the the people who are unaware of what the fuck is going on, yeah. um, in the situation you're just talking about, but. I think in order for it to actually come down to something, it would have to be something so powerful like the Second Amendment. It truly would. Jesse. Because when when you look at Virginia... I was saying you should hand me one. You look at Virginia, which is... A, black cherry, I don't like it. Virginia, and you and I talked about this a little bit and how much of a, a red state or how Republican the state is, is the governor of Virginia, they passed laws to where they said that they're not going to allow guns anymore and that the, the governor... Came out and said that he wants to confiscate guns for people. Good luck. Yeah. So all of a sudden there was like twenty different sanctuary. Like people talk to their their mayors and shit like that, and they're like, "Hey, we're not going to be a part of this. Like we're going to be a sanctuary, a sanctuary city, and you're not going to be able to take our guns away." And they pass laws and shit like that. Well, it got to the point where the governor was of Virginia was getting on social media saying that he would call in the national guard. To come and confiscate guns from people. Good good luck. You're going to run into a, a lot of issues yeah. and a lot of dead people. And then right. Well, High Impact Vlogs, and this is what I told you when I talked to you about the conversation. Brian from High Impact Vlogs, I'm still trying to get him on the show. I've been trying for over a year now. I've hit him up on two Super Chats. Um, he actually called the National Guard of Virginia, and he had a conversation with one of the National Guardsmen. And he said, hey, do you know what's going on with the governor? Like how he wants to take guns away from everyone, and he want you know, and the National Guard man's like, yeah, I'm I'm super aware of it. And then Brian just asked him, he's like, well, how do your people feel about it? Would they actually enact if if the governor said, hey, go and take these guns away from people? Would you do it? And the guy said, no. He's like, there's no one here that would stand for that. We wouldn't take guns away from anyone. That is refreshing. That is refreshing. Like we have that man. Because if we they were, that. if they were, you'd start a fucking civil war. You cannot. This is why you have it separated state by state anyway. If a state, like if a state says, and the people in the state fucking want their fucking guns, which I don't know why the governor is, because that is a very much he's probably getting paid. He's probably getting paid a lot of money from some other people to fucking take some goddamn. I don't. I don't fucking know. But you can't do that. That's civil unrest. You create civil unrest, and all of a sudden there's pointless fucking violence over an issue that's because what's the whole point of them taking away guns? Right, it all comes down to mass shootings. You're talking about mass shootings. 
we've had this discussion on the podcast before. The origin of okay, the origin of them taking away goddamn guns lawfully is because of mass shootings attempting to pre- prevent mass shootings. What we've always said, and I thoroughly believe in, and I think a lot of people here agree with me, is that whenever bad people want to do bad things, right, they find sure. fucking ways to do it. For sure, you do not disarm the public and take away a goddamn right for them to defend themselves uh, in in doing so. There's, yeah, it's. I know it's beating a dead horse because we, we talked about yeah, that a lot here too. So we got we got about twelve minutes left, and I just want to do something a little bit different. And uh, I'm just going to ask you and Johnny questions, or I'll ask one question, you both can answer. And I know, that, man, we have, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, but we have like 360 subs, and I appreciate each and every single one of those people. I truly appreciate it. Love but the I, fuck out of you guys. Yeah, I'm going for highlight videos, so I'm going to just ask questions for the last ten minutes of this podcast. And just blue. Exactly. Blue. That's my answer. So, Je- so Jesse, Seven, maybe Jesse, 11. Johnny, and then however you guys want to go, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But why is America obese? Uh, it's because of the access uh, to fast food. Uh, we have an access that's super easy, that's super shitty food. And we live more sedentary lifestyles than we ever have had because a lot of work's done just sitting down. It's not like farm work and shit. Like, back like 100 years ago. We live a very sedentary lifestyle. We have access to really unhealthy foods that taste, I mean, fucking amazing. Goddamn, I love Burger King. Like, that's that's what that is. Fast food is cheaper than healthy food. It is cheaper to sit on my ass and watch Netflix than it is to go rock climbing in Colorado. I'd rather go rock climb, climbing in Colorado, to be 100% honest with you. But it's way cheaper to sit and watch Netflix. Uh, basically, it comes down to those two things. Honestly, like... Uh, and, and hard work. People don't want to put in the hard work, myself included. Like People don't want to go out and exercise until you reach a certain point in your life where you're like, oh, I must absolutely do this, so on and so forth. But no, uh, we've, made, we've made everything that is bad for you, from food to entertainment, very easily accessible and cheap. And we've made everything that's good for you, from food to entertainment, more expensive and harder to get to. Okay. That's my answer. Where the, oh, there's some more shit, too. I, yeah. can, I could go down that road for well, you, a little you bit. You, went, you, you had your go, time, man. You had your time. You should have Quick question. Through. Speed round. It, it doesn't have to be a, a quick answer, either. Um, just whatever you feel from your heart, man. Um, Got you. Will, will there always be perpetual war? Do you want to hit that one? Yeah, I'm just trying to think real quick. I have, that's I have a, that's a, that yeah, go. No, if you're ready, go for it, because I don't know. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think it's ingrained into us that... Um, we get in our little groups and we will always dislike someone else and there's always one person that's more heated than the other people and they end up leading for some reason and start fucking stupid shit. I think it's very much human nature. I don't think you'll ever see people where or or a time where humanity is not in war. And I'm not... I'm not saying that... Uh, oh, man. No, there will never be a complete time of peace on Earth. There will always be people killing each other or fighting each other on some level. That's just because human beings get angry at other human beings, dislike other human beings for other reasons, and violence is very much a part of us. And I think you need to realize that, that we have a violent nature within us. It's not something you just be like, oh, no, human beings aren't naturally violent. No, yes, we are. We're like any other animal. Uh, I don't think we're so... Yeah, I, I think we're... Human life is more important than other animals. I'm not like going to get on a PETA level here, but I also think we have a very much biological chemical brain to where violence is very easy for us in certain scenarios. And violence violence happens in, in war. War will always happen. You, human beings would have to transcend to something else to where war wouldn't be a thing. I know it's really shitty, but that's, that's just kind of how it is. Mine is honestly pretty much the exact same answer as Jesse. The only two things I'll add with that are that we're uh, just like animals. We're super territorial, and that comes with that. On not, I'm not just talking about your house, but I'm talking about like your country. Like nationalism is a huge thing with people. Take, people take pride in their country, so on and so forth. And the same thing with religion. Like you take Paul, you would do anything for your kids. You truly believe in your kids, and you love them with every ounce of your heart, and you would protect them no matter what. If someone came after them, you would do that. The issue we have, and why we have war, is there are people who feel as strongly about their religion as you do about your kids. So if their religion says that they're right and everybody else is wrong, they will kill for it. It's scary. It's scary, but that's very true. But that's true. accurate. And that's... That people believe in something so much and they're not willing to ever say that it's wrong. 
and they get so caught up, and that's brainwashed shit, in my opinion. And I think that's a fest. I think religion is a festering scab that needs to be lifted. There's good parts. The There's good. We've had this society. conversation because religion has sparked more war and more violence than anything else. Oddly enough, what's supposed to save your soul, right? And in humanity has caused has more deaths than more deaths, more torture, more fucking brutal fucking hate crimes than anything else has been fucking religion. This is great to fucking think about. Enjoy your church on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, I'm sitting there if trying you to got another, if you got another one. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to sit there and think in my head. Uh, this is very spontaneous. I didn't intend on doing this, but it just I like kinda, it. Yeah, it just kinda, like it too. Kind of clicked with me. Um, do you? Okay, here we go. I got one. Just kidding. I said that just for this th- for the sake of <laughs> to actually to actually go back to the previous one, and I'm going to give you some time to think about for sure the next you. question. Um, you have, and I'm going to bring up religion here. Oddly enough, you have the Hinduist mentality where they say the only way to truly be completely happy with oneself is to have no wants. So to not want at all, to not want any physical thing, to not want attention, self-gratification, all these things is the only way to truly be happy. like nirvana? Yeah, like to find inner peace and nirvana is to not want all this shit. To not want people to believe the same way that you, the way that you do. To not want... Uh, material objects to not progress and all you all you do is you worry about other people's happiness and in the end what can i do for you to help you and i don't i don't want anything from you it's a pure self which obviously you get into that paradox to where can you ever do anything selflessly but what um ends up happening is the exact opposite of any any culture that we've ever seen i don't know why i was going down that road but i wanted to bring that up because you talked about like violence, like how to prevent violence. If you want to prevent violence, you have to get rid of people wanting things. The second people are just okay with exactly the moment that they live in right now, then all of a sudden now they're wanting territory, money. They're wanting this goal and like this, all this, all these pursuits of of things that are don't stick with you. You don't you don't get to keep anything. However amount of money you make, however, how many houses you bought, you don't get to keep them forever. They will eventually go away. I don't care if you, science comes up with a way for you to live eternally. Well, eventually a fucking asteroid's going to come in, destroy the earth. Eventually the universe is going to fucking be destroyed. Nobody's fucking eternal. That's not how things are meant to be anyway. I think everything has a beginning. Thus, the end is also important just as much. Why does, <clears throat> okay. Why does the media have so much influence over our society? Because we watch it. <laughs> what do you What do you mean? Know. What do you mean what by is, that? Like, what does the media what, so much influence what, on our society? Why has okay. What do you mean by media? Do you mean like news, or do you mean like all media, like, like yeah, books, news, uh, news? Sorry, sorry, sorry. TV series. Why, why does news media? What? How are they affecting the way that we live? I guess is what I'm asking. I don't think they are as much as they used to. I think that the generation that watches the news and truly bases their ideals on the news, whether it be Fox or CBS or CNN or anything else, I honestly believe that that generation is kind of dying off and that we're coming out of that. The only problem is now that news is being passed on from Fox now to Facebook. Now that is your media outlet. That is where you get your viewpoints. And it's from other people that are... For, take Facebook, for example. It's, it's, even, it's even scarier because it's not coming from someone you don't know. It's not coming from a random newscaster. It's coming from your friends on your Facebook page. The only difference is Facebook is picking which ones they choose to show you. So if they want to influence you, what better way to influence you than find all your friends who believe in a certain thing they want you to believe in, that Facebook wants you to believe in, and then put all those posts on your page so that you constantly are bombarded with those kind of things. That's why it influences us, because we can't close our eyes to it. Yeah. Because it's, it's the one thing that we have to, to go off of. Okay. Yeah. Is that all you got? What, what was the initial question? Kind of spaced off there a little bit. Uh, my, my only argument with you, Johnny, and not much of it, but I agree with a lot of what you just well, said. I argue I'm a piss. I think that... It's not dying down at all. I mean, viewership for certain, or for all media like Fox and CNN and all that, it's down. 
like you know you're talking like 600,000 viewers, 2 million viewers a night or whatever. But on their YouTube channel you're seeing millions of views per each video and shit like that. So there's still mm. millions of people as a very large influence, I guess. But um yeah, I feel like you've got more and more millions and millions on every other channel other than Fox and everything for else. For sure, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think my parents aren't waking up and watching the news. They used to. They used to. They don't do it anymore. I don't wake up and watch the news. I used to for school closings and stuff like that when I was a kid. Yeah. I I'm not saying it's dying off rapidly, but I think it will be gone. For sure. And it will move into a scarier, hidden way that we don't see it. Like, people don't realize that... And I keep using Facebook as an example because it's the most obvious one. But even as obvious as it is, people don't realize it's happening. People don't realize that they're being fed stuff on an advertisement level that it's not just... It's not random. That is curated content. That is super curated, in fact. Like, down to a scientific level that they know what you want to... I don't know. Okay. I'll hit I'll hit up another question. Why are humans so susceptible to being swayed to live a certain way? Easy. Easy. Oh, we're about to disagree. Easy. Is that the right way to say it though? Yeah, no, yeah, no, that's I you're saying that why are you, will you say it for me, Johnny? I'm trying well, It's to, hard for me to say it because I don't agree with it at all. I'm wait, just trying wait, to, you don't agree with the question? No. I'm, why are humans susceptible? Because the way that question is that question is worded, that's a loaded question. Okay, so sorry. Why are humans susceptible to being brainwashed? Oh, that is different. That's kind of what I'm asking. Why are humans be susceptible susceptible to being brainwashed? Use a different word than brainwashed in that question. Uh, that that's how I think it, because it's not actual brainwashing. You're you're talking about because it's not like real brainwashing. It's slow. Well, maybe. It's weird. I feel like that's a really hard word. I don't know. Maybe. Use fuck it. Use brainwashing. <laughs> Answer the question. No, I, I was saying I don't think we are. Really? More. I think we allow ourselves to be. I think some people do. Some people who don't. I'm going to use the word that you used earlier in this podcast that Jesse hates. And I also, I don't care either way. I don't hate it. I don't like it either, though. Woke. I hate it. Yeah. I hate and I understand it. why you do. I don't care, though. It's But you using... I think it's because not enough people are woke, for ba- lack of a better term, that they are susceptible. Like, not to sound conceited, because I definitely am too. Everybody is, and maybe I just don't realize it as much. But, like, like you have to look behind the curtain, you know? Wizard of Oz reference, like, you got to look behind the curtain and see the person in control. And then I feel like once you see that, and you think it's there, and you realize it's there, you're a lot less susceptible to... Your mind being changed by stuff that's obviously fake and obviously curated for you and is obviously brainwashing. Can I? Can I? I, I want to. You know, it's weird. Jesse. Jesse, before you it go, reminded in. me so much of Jason right then. Just, but just so much of a more rational version, though. I, I, I would hope. I would hope. That was just I didn't a mention, I didn't mention the Holocaust or lizard no, people. No, it was basically just a roundabout, like what he was all about without all the ridiculousness. How do we go from there? There had to have been a toy. A, a toy. <laughs> One. It's one. <laughs> there had to have been a time where we were all at one point or another hunter or gatherers. Every single human being on this earth was a hunter or gatherer. And then, yes, we did find a way to, to create a civilization Can or a society of some sort. But within, if we're passing on DNA and in, in evolution and whatever, if whether it exists or not, but if evolution truly did exist and the strongest and the fittest survive, then we have the strongest and fittest, minus minus medicine and minus and minus the technological revolution. Up until that point, you have the strongest human beings that are on this earth. If evolution is real, am I right in saying that? No, that's not how evolution works. How, how evolution not? is an adaptation to your environment. So what it is? But the strongest survive, do they not? In that environment, to the environment. So in each now, env- how do you know human beings are placed in the best environment? That are is developmental to human beings. So there are certain environments that allow people who don't have to be strong to survive in that environment. Okay, like, so I get it. Like, there's how, how do we get to this point where there's just such a massive amount of people that just don't give a shit what the fuck is going okay. on? Okay, human beings are still fickle in a sense. Like, whenever you're a baby, you still need very essential. Like, if you don't touch a baby, like you could feed a baby, but it's through like a robot arm, and they don't get any human interaction. Babies like die and shit. Like, we need certain things to, uh, like, progress us. Like, we're not, we haven't, evolution hasn't caught up. Like, the biological evolution hasn't caught up to how the technic, technical side of it has advanced. So we are actually way behind 
when everything is very much like light speed fast in front of us. That's when you ever you get in, like involved with like AI and how we're going to be surpassed one day. And if you know we don't merge, then we're going to be fucked, which is probably how it's going to end up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, 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 realistically, like if I had to see like the death of the human race, it's basically what it's going to be is we we either merge with AI or we fucking or we just die off as like you know and there's some or that could be the Terminator. evolution of human race dude the, Termin- the Terminator it. fucking ending fucking makes sense we create our own fucking our own destroyer uh, our own destruction it's a very human thing to do by the way <laughs> see I don't think it ends that way though. Uh, I, don't, I, th- I think but it, what I oh, fuck man there was something what was your initial question can you tell me your initial question because I, I feel like I had a point that I really wanted to bring into it I was just saying, why do why do people just give in, basically? Oh, being brainwashed. Okay, so I have a very simple explanation for this. is because we do everything based off pain and pleasure. You actually brought this up earlier on the podcast, I believe. That our brains work very simplistically. You do something, and it hurts you. You fucking put your hand on a fucking stove. You're like, fuck, that fucking hurt. I'm not doing that again. You don't put your goddamn hand on a stove again. You do something, you're like, wow, this is fucking great. You jerk off. I'm probably going to do that again. <laughs> so what you end up getting, <laughs> what you end up getting is this group of people that basically base their lives around instantaneous, not not even long term. I'm talking about instantaneous pain and pleasure, uh, shit that happens chemically in your fucking brain that now your whole life is developed around, which is, I'm sorry, there is no one that, that is outside of this. No. Very few people fucking go, oh, for the betterment of... Everything, I'm going to give up all my money and I'm going to move to fucking wherever and do that shit. It's too much pain. It's too much pain. But pleasure for everyone's different at that point because what allows someone to be successful and, 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 and whatever pain successful and pleasure is, instinctfully is whatever, a survival. So it's a having, survival mechanism that I'm talking about right now. But the survive, human, so, so there's so nothing what, survival about having billions and billions of dollars. Okay, there's okay, nothing survival okay, about I'm, that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I went off on a weird thing with that. Let me just come back with me just a little bit. Okay. Rewind with me just a little bit here. Okay, man. So now what you have is you have this knowledge of how people base their uh, interactions, how they decide to do things, and everything. They, they base it off pain and pleasure. Well, you give... If you want to control people, you don't make them angry. You don't give them fucking pain. What you do is you give them fucking pleasure. You give them as much instantaneous pleasure as you possibly can. And you know what? You have them under control. And they feel like they're fucking free and fucking all this. This is basically what I was coming... How do you brainwash people? You don't pleasure. imprison them. You don't imprison them. Fucking force them in a share where they fucking hate watching whatever you're showing them, their propaganda. What you do is you give them everything that they love. You give them chocolate, cheeseburgers, pussy, fucking... Kardashians. Weed, Kardashians, dude. This is the, the pleasure just firing synapses. And all you, oh. all you know, all you know is this is what's good. This is my brain. It's been telling me this is good since I was fucking six years old. My parents thought this was good. And next thing you know... You don't give a shit about what's anything that's actually beneficial for you in the long term because we're instantaneous pleasure. Pleasure synapses firing in your brain. That is how you brainwash people. You don't fucking suppress them. You give them everything that they actually want. Fucking all of it. And they end up coming like, like handcuff me. And at that, at that point, you're just like, hey, oh, are you kidding me? I still get to watch Kardashians, smoke fucking weed, Chiefs play drink football. fucking boo- booze, fucking make $30,000 a year. Fuck it, three days off, handcuff me. Where, whoever the fuck you want me to vote for. I know it doesn't matter who I fucking vote for, but whoever the fuck you tell me to vote for, I'll fucking vote for him. <laughs> like, that's what it is. No, you're right. That's exactly what it is. We're so simple. We're so simple, man. In yeah, that's it. It's hard to get away from it. Even though you know it, like you know it, dude, you'll tell yourself, oh man, I need to do something that causes me pain to progress me in life. It's hard to fucking do. You really got to have the mentality to fucking go through that. And people do have the ability to overcome that and become better. Don't get me wrong. It's not like we're completely enslaved to this whole fucking thing. Like, you can overcome it. But, man, it's... Man, they gave us a lot. You know? They gave us, they according, gave us too much. According to ancient, ancient fucking shit, according to all ancient texts, I mean, we're going through the same stuff that they went through. They had, they had it down then. Dude, because biologically... They have it down now. Biologically... What's so much different about us than them? Nothing. We still have two eyes, fucking ten fucking fingers, speak a goddamn language, right? Yep. Fucking hard dick, whatever. <laughs> that's, that's, dude, that's what it's been. It's what it's been for fucking yeah. forever. Yep. It's what it's been for fucking forever. They enjoyed sports back then. We like sports. Fucking, dude, all of it. We love getting drunk. We love getting drunk, having goddamn conversations. 
That'll never there's, change. There's nothing like, dude, I've been on the side of a mountain in the past six months in front of a fire, just like drunk as fuck. Dude, that's what my ancestors were doing thousands of years ago. Same goddamn shit. Camping, and it felt nice, and honestly fucking felt nice to get back to my ancestral origins. <laughs> in front of a campfire fucking drunk, as opposed to sitting in front of a mic drunk. But, but yeah, that's how it is, man. It's weird. Well, we are at the top of the hour, man. We're at an hour eight minutes. I love the podcast tonight. Your little question thing, by the way, is it's good. Very nice. That's good for very that's good nice. for highlights too. I like what you did for sure. there. I, yeah. You should do that in the future as well. That's oh yeah, I plan on it, man. That's solid. I had it. I had that that vision, and we'll talk about it after the podcast. But uh, thank you all for watching this video. If you watch in its entirety, I truly greatly appreciate that. Um, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit the bell notification to all our junkies out there. Stay fly and ring the bell.